Day 38 of the Kitchen Makeover. We've got all the stuff down off of the top of the cabinets. Jamie's been painting the places she can reach while she patiently waits for me to trim out this island. Are which you saying I'm short? You are short. I'm going to be trimming out the island and doing that while she continues to paint. And you can see the brightness there. i got to tone that back. There we go. She's got this wall mostly done over here. This white is going to make it tricky to film in here without... She's got the blinds off of the windows, the curtains down off the, the windows over there. They're getting washed. First things first. I'm going to cut a 45 on this end here and then I'm going to mark over there where I need to do a 45 on the other end. So this is the opposite side where I've got this first piece cut and this is just the, uh, the waist part that I trimmed off but I'm going to use it to kind of butt up so I can see where my 45 meets up right here because this isn't perfectly flush and when I trim off these corners I want it to be less caulk work right down here. So the 45 I just cut is on the other end of this board where I was just lining this piece up. Now I'm going to use this right here now that I've got it where I want it and just make a line right there with this as a spacer. And now I know right here is where I want my 45 to end. Once both ends are cut, I'm just going to line it up and use my little scrap piece of wood to make sure that my cuts are right and my angles are perfect. As I'm lining stuff up here, I'm going to run my little scrap piece that I've got. And I've just got it right under here in the bottom. And that is going to be my mark for the 45 on this side. Just marking that with a pencil. I've got the 45 pretty much lined up down there once I staple it together. So I'm going to cut this a little big and then come back and see how it fits up. Alright, so it looks like I'm a little long, about a hair long, just an eighth of an inch. So I'll go trim that off and then that'll be ready to staple up. I don't remember if I mentioned this. This is four by one, just pine square stock that I'm using. It was already pre-painted at Home Depot. I think it was like eight dollars a board and they came in eight foot lengths. So real handy to just do this board and batten style look like we did on the other walls. We're refinishing the floors before I actually staple this on. That way we don't have to go back in and pull these off. We can get all the way under here so that the floor is continuous. We didn't paint the underside of the cupboards here because we are going to be trimming that out as well. So we didn't really worry about finishing that out. And you can see the little piece of trim over here in the corner of the little excess that I've been using to measure. But I'm going to go ahead and cut that the same as I did the other side. I've got to cut pieces for the top and then I'll bring them all in and show you guys how I put them together. Before I go cutting this on the top, I just wanted to show you this part. I'm going to leave the face of this top flush right here because I'm not going to put some little trim up above where the drawer closes. So this is going to be flush and then this will have a piece coming down right here on the edge and that will meet up down here on the bottom. So I'll have to put a little bit of caulking in there and smooth that out and then we can paint that. Mostly just wanted to show you that because I'm not going to do a 45 right here. Alright, so this panel here doesn't have anything supporting it up along the top. It's just a quarter inch thick and then there's like a plastic brace on the inside over here. The back of it has a three quarter inch piece about like this on the inside supporting it. But right here doesn't have much support. So I'm going to use a one inch, I don't normally, I wouldn't normally put glue on this so I could get it off later, but since it's only going to be 
a short nail into three quarters of, or into a quarter inch of material. I'm gonna glue it and then staple it on there with an 18 gauge one inch nail. A little bit of uh, lightweight spackling on that and you won't even know I stapled it. Now that that is stapled up on there, I'm going to use that to get my measurement because I've got a little bit of jog out right here that isn't gonna quite fit. So I'm gonna run, I'll just use this for an example. I'm gonna run a piece right down here, a lot like board and batten, all the way to the edge there. And then we'll leave this hanging over. It'll come over and then just come down a little bit. So it's right at just a hair over 28. So I'm gonna cut it probably 28 and an eighth. That way it'll be a little long and I can sneak up to my measurement so that I don't have a gap there. So I'm gonna fit this flush right there like that. My angle's gonna come in here on the front. Now I'm gonna have a little bit of a gap here and it's gonna be easier for me to just cut a strip this wide across and apply it to the whole face of this than it will to come over here and try to trim this out and do like a little L thing and make an angle cut and it'll be, and this will look like it did before pretty much. It'll just have that overhang like it always has had. All right, so I used the same method to measure up this side here. Now I'm just gonna staple it in. Now I could 45 this. I'm just gonna run another piece of trim right here beside it because I'm not gonna worry about it being a little bit farther over on the panel. Make sure my bottom's lined up before I put more staples in. All right, it's coming along. I'm moving on to the other side of the island here to trim that out the same way I did on the other side. But I've got this outlet right here that is going to be a pain. So I'm just gonna have to make a little cutout right there and just fit that in. And I'll have a little bit of cutout in my trim, but I like, we use this outlet a lot, so I need to have access to it. All right, so I marked on my outlet right where I need to cut it where the board overlaps, and it's right at 7 8 I'm gonna go ahead and cut a 7 8 notch right here out of this board, and that should fit up there just right. I've got my notch marked out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it with the jigsaw. You can see the cut out there. We'll remove the face plate and paint that up with the rest of it when we get this all caulked and puttied, but it fits up pretty nice. Going in with the top trim piece here, and then I just have to add one more center piece down here. Then I'm gonna add some corbels that I built, and I'll show you guys those in just a minute here. Because I don't have an edge to reference on the side, I'm just gonna use the uh, spirit bubble here to make sure I'm straight up and down. I'm almost ready to start doing the caulk work and to putty up all these holes, but I made some corbels that Jamie wants to fit under here. They're not structural. They could be, they're plenty sturdy, but I make all of these. These are the lens. They're on our website at jamierayvintage.com if you, if you love them and you want a pair. I've just got some wood glue and because I'm just stapling these on, the glue will help hold it on there pretty well once it's dry. It's just regular wood glue. I'm just lining that up with this seam right here on the edge. 
and I'm going to I'm going to toenail these in. What that is is just kind of just go in at an angle instead of going in straight. The floor's done and sealed, so now I'm just fitting these trim pieces back on here and gonna staple them on and then the island will be finished. I'm using white caulk to fill in the seams, and then I go back in with just a piece of foam that I've got, it's damp, and that smooths out any bumps or excess that I've got on the seam there. The island's all trimmed out. I hope that you guys were able to follow that step by step all right, and you're able to do it in your own homes. The corbels are on, they're looking great. The lens turned out real nice. You can buy the lens at jamierayvintage.com, and if you'd like them unfinished, um, just PM me on Facebook or shoot me an email and let me know because then we'll give you a di like it's like 10% less if you want them unfinished. Then you can paint them and match your own cabinets. Yeah. It was a really simple too. I mean with a few tools and, and nail gun you can really take a basic island and give it so much more architecture. In fact, I'm pretty sure I love my island even more than my cabinets because I love the design and style. Yeah, it's more like the board and batten. It really matches the rest of the room in here. Makes it look like a piece of furniture. Yep. Very farmhouse. Um, be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com for the corbels and the paint and products that we use. Comment below with any questions you have on the build that we did. We're happy to help you out so that way you can do something similar in your own home. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit the little notifications button so you don't ever miss a video, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage. For more DIY.